Hello, my name is Vic and welcome back to the channel. If you missed it last time, I showed you how to install GIMP or the GNU Image Manipulation Program, which we're going to use to be editing photos and doing some fancy things. Now, whether or not GIMP is better than Photoshop or Photoshop is better than GIMP, I really don't know. I haven't used Photoshop in a long time, so I'm not really able to compare professionally which one is better. But GIMP is open source and it's free and it's actually very powerful. So you might just find everything that you need in GIMP without having to fork out a lot of money to purchase a Photoshop license. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to remove the background of an image. And if you want to follow along with today's example, you can go to pexels.com. There is a chair photo that I've downloaded. I've linked in the description below so that you can also download the same photo. It's free and you can follow along with this tutorial. Now, just as a quick version check, I am using for this tutorial GIMP 2.10.24, which is the most current version. Here's my photo that I've downloaded. Let's go ahead and drag and drop that into GIMP. It's going to ask me to convert it into the native color profile, which is fine. I'll click convert. We've loaded our image over here. And basically what I wanted to do is I want to remove the background. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. One is the quick and dirty way, which is maybe the easy way. And the other one is a more precise and a little bit more meticulous way of doing. And I'll show you the differences in the results. So just a brief overview of the GIMP interface here. Obviously, we've got our image in the middle. We've got some of our tools here on the left. And we've got our layers and our paths here, which we're going to be using. And if you don't have this turned on, this window over here, I would go ahead and click on Select and click on Selection Editor. That's going to open up this window. And I'll show you how this is important here in a minute. Typically, at the default, I think you would see your brushes, which we're not really going to be going over today. Now, for the first method to do the quick and dirty, we are going to be using our fuzzy select tool. So go ahead and click on that. Or if you're a keyboard warrior, you press letter U. That should open up your tool. And let's just try to remove this white background from the chair. So the fuzzy select tool is really good at images that have fairly plain backgrounds. As you can see here, it selected most of the white in that background. It pretty much stopped where the white sheet is meeting the carpet because that's a different color. And we can also see some speckles in here if I zoom in. So to zoom in, you just hold the control button and you zoom in with the mouse wheel. So there we go. See, so we see some speckles here because that's a different color grayish area. And I'll just show you a little bit over here as well. Now, what we want to do and what we can do is add this into our selection. So what I'll do is I'll hold the shift key and you'll see the plus sign and I will click on that area and it will add it to my selection. So you can see some of those speckles start to disappear. Let's go ahead and also clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and holding down the shift key again and click right clicking to select those. Now you'll notice that there's still a few little speckles here that need to be cleaned up, but we're not too bothered about that because I'm going to show you how to get rid of those speckles. We've pretty much selected the outside of the area, which is fine, which is most of what we need. And I'm going to go ahead and start selecting the inside of the chair here. So again, holding down the shift key to add to that selection. And I'm going to leave this middle area, this big back area here, unselected on purpose because I want to demonstrate something to you a little bit later. So now we've got our selection here. And as you can see in our selection editor, you just want to click on that selection editor. You can see the white space and that's pretty much what we've selected. So we excluding the chair and the black here, which is pretty much the bottom of the image is excluded in the selection. Oops, control Z because I accidentally cleared it. 
What we want to do is remove the background and replace it with a transparent background. So the first step that we want to do is I would like to add an alpha channel to our layer. So click on the layer here of your image. I didn't change most of the interface. So what you see here should be the default for you as well. So go ahead and right click on that, add alpha channel. What that does is adds an alpha or a transparency to the back of that. What I also like to do is I like to duplicate this layer just in case we really mess things up. I have a duplicate that I can work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide the one at the bottom and then select the one on top just in case so that we're working with this layer. Now it's pretty simple. Say we want to remove this background and we also want to get rid of these speckles here. What I can do is select. I can grow the selection by one pixel and that should take away all those tiny little speckles. So now that the speckles are gone, that's great. What it's also done is it's increased our selection area to include a little bit. So control Z to show you. So that's without the growing, but if we grow it, so we edit redo, it's gonna select a little bit more. In this case, I want to do that because I wanna get rid of as much white background as possible. And now we're ready to clear this. We'll go ahead, edit and cut, control X, or you can simply press the delete key on your keyboard. So let's clear the selection. I'll select none. And we can see that we've got a transparent background. That was pretty quick to do, but as you can see here, it's still quite a little bit dirty and messy. But depending on how quick you need the result, and what kind of result you're looking for. You might just want to do a quick and dirty job. That will probably be enough because when you zoom out over here, you can't really see all those tiny little imperfections. So the next method that I'm going to show you is the more meticulous method, which is going to be using a path tool to make our selection. So let's go ahead and click on our paths tool here and we're gonna be using the paths tool to remove this middle area. So the paths tool is pretty awesome because then you can edit the nodes and then refine the selection. So I'm gonna click here to add a node and then I'm just gonna add a few different nodes here and I'll show you how to edit this so that we can get the right curves to really hug the lines of this chair. Now you can really be as detailed as you want, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna try to make it quick and easy for you as well. Now what we want to do finally is we want to close this polygon. So I've got the last node selected here, and I'm gonna hold down the control key and hover over the first node here, and you can see those two dots connecting each other. Click on it and that will close our path. Now, to view our paths, you're gonna to have to click on the paths tab over here. You might have it all still in the layers, so just go over to the paths tab and we'll see it. It's not shown right now because it's invisible. We'll click on the eye over here to show it and we'll see that path in red. Now we can edit these nodes if we like. So what I'm gonna do is I can just grab this line go ahead and try to edit by grabbing these handles and getting it to curve around as accurate as possible. So there we go. We can, again, I'll show you that. You can grab this line and then curve it around. It'll show up with these handles that you can then grab and manipulate a little bit more. If you needed an extra node, what you can do is hold down the control key and you can see the plus sign over here. And if I click on the middle here, it'll add a node. So I don't really need that node there. So what I can do is I can just control Z to undo. If you make a mistake in clicking, let's say I click over here, I've got this random node, same thing, just control Z to click out. 
let's go ahead and continue our work. I'm going to edit this. Again, this really depends on how accurate you want it to be. What you can do as well is you can move the node. Moving nodes can be a little bit funny sometimes. What I like to do is just click on another node over there. Make sure this is not clicked and I can move this one. Let's see, I can move this one. If I have this line selected and those two nodes selected, if I move it, it tends to move both at the same time. So I don't want that. So if you want to avoid that, you can just click on another node that's away to select just one single node and then move it around. So just a little tip. So now that we've got our path really hugging the outline of our chair, we can now convert this into a selection. So make sure you've selected the path. You can do that by just clicking on the path there. Click on select. And what we're going to do is from path. So what that will do is it will select an outline based on the path that we had just drawn. If you don't want to see those nodes, you just press B or click on paths and the node should disappear. Now what we can see here is just our selection. Let me turn off the path here. As you can see to demonstrate that we've got our selection outline here. That looks pretty good to me. Similarly, what we can do now is just go into edit and cut. Alternatively, I'm just gonna press the delete key and that will clear my background. I'm going to clear this selection so that we can see it better. So if we want to compare, this is a lot crisper compared to our auto select tool. So depending on what you're looking for, you can either use the quick select, the fuzzy select tool, or you can use the paths tool to make your selection. Now, unfortunately, for the bottom of our chair, we cannot take advantage of the auto select tool. As you can see here, it's just a little bit too grainy for us to make a proper selection. Let's see if I'm trying to add, it's you're going to be clicking for forever. You're going to be clicking for ages. So in this case, it is much better to just use the paths tool to clean up the bottom of the chair. And I'm going to do that right now. So we pretty much finished outlining using our paths tool here. So we're ready to convert this into a selection. So go ahead, select and from path, that's going to give us the selection. As you can see here, it selected most of the outline at the bottom of our chair. We can go ahead and clear that. Press B to get rid of the path. Control Shift A to get rid of the selection. And now we're left with a nice image of no background and just our chair. Now the final step that we need to do is to export this. So we go into File, Export As, and it's important to save this as a PNG file. So I already got the file name here. I'm going to go ahead and write over it. But you can go ahead and type in the file name and just type in .png to make sure that it's the right format. Click on export. I'll replace that. And it's going to ask you with this dialog and make sure you untick save background color. So that will make sure that your background is indeed transparent. Go ahead and export. And now we've got our image with the transparent background. So just to check it really quick, we've got our image here, transparent. Let's open that and we can see that the checkerboard transparent background. 
And that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something today. I know that some people will use a masking technique to get this done. There's multiple ways to remove background from an image. I'm just showing you the way that I learned and the way that I think is easiest for beginners to do. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.